Hey, welcome to Learning to Lead. I'm Paul Doherty, your host. So honored that you're watching uh, and listening to this episode. It's been a while since I've recorded something. It's 2020. We're here. It's hard to believe we're in a new uh, decade. And people are saying these are the roaring 20s, which I fully believe. And I'm excited about this decade. I was talking to our staff this week about some of my favorite commercials from the Super Bowl. So I don't know if you watched the Super Bowl this year, but there was some good commercials. There were some dumb commercials. There were some commercials that I couldn't wait to be over. And uh, like the halftime show, <laughs> we just kind of turned the TV off. It was, uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, but there were a few commercials that really stood out to me and some that I just really had to talk about to our staff. Um, one of them that was really funny was the Doritos commercial. All right, so in this commercial, in case you didn't see it, I'll just tell you about it. Um, there's this older guy who's a cowboy and this younger guy who comes riding in on his horse and he's the author, singer of, um, I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road, gonna ride down the cane. I don't even know all the words, uh, but I love that, that song. I love the, the feeling of that song. And they start dancing, they have a competition. It's really funny. Everyone who I was with during that, that commercial just stopped what they were doing and started paying attention. And I was talking about how, to our staff, how the world is in like hot pursuit for our attention. The world is trying everything they can to get our attention. Why? Because if they can get our attention, they might be able to sell us their product. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what these commercials are buying their time to do. That's what these companies are buying the commercial slots to do. They're not just trying to make us laugh. They're not just trying to make us cry. They want us to buy their product. They're saying to us, um, you are missing out until you get this, until you subscribe to this, until you buy this, until you own this, until you have this. And so they're going to use every type of, you know, commercial idea to try to get our attention so that way they can get our money, right? So that one was a, an, an interesting commercial. But the other one that I thought was probably the best commercial out of the entire Super Bowl period of those four hours where these companies will pay $5 million for a one-minute slot they are you know, spending tons of money. That's just to buy the slot. On top of that, they're spend, probably spending a million or more dollars just to make the commercial. And so when you add all that up, honestly, you gotta ask yourself, okay, um, whatever they're gonna spend that much money on, they are going to really ask themselves, is this the message we wanna send? And does this message work? And one of the companies that I thought did the best job was Google. So Google produced a commercial all about memories and this older man um, starts talking to his Google computer saying, um, will you remember this? Will you remember that? Will you remind me of this one moment with my wife? And it starts pulling up pictures of him and his wife, pulling up memories. And everyone who I was with in the house while, while we were watching this one commercial, man, people's eyes were just glued to the TV for a minute and a half. People started getting teary-eyed, right, in the midst of the Super Bowl, start like feeling, feeling this emotional moment connected to a commercial, um, and everyone in the room after the commercial was over, by the way, everyone got quiet, even the kids just got quiet. We had like five-year-old, four-year-old, three-year-old, and uh, everyone got quiet to watch this commercial. And that's when I realized, when I looked around the room, I thought, okay, as a preacher, I'm paying attention to this right here. What gets people's attention? What keeps their focus? What connects with people's hearts? Because that's what I want to do as a preacher. That's what you want to do as a leader is you want to connect with people's hearts. You don't want to just connect with people's uh, minds. You don't want to just connect with their intellect. You don't want to just connect with their humor and make them laugh. You want to connect with their heart. Because at the end of the day, if you can connect with someone's heart as a leader, chances are they're, they're going to be one step closer to following your leadership and listening to what you have to say and believing in what you're uh, trying to lead them into. And that's what this commercial did. It captured our attention, captured our emotions, made us think a little bit more about what really matters. Um, that was kind of the point of the commercial is, you know, what, what are we really going to think about in the end? And I think that's what the world is thinking about right now is what really matters, especially after Kobe Bryant and his daughter and the seven others on that helicopter that passed into eternity um, immediately. Right, just a few weeks ago, the helicopter crash. People are thinking, what really matters? And as leaders, we've got to, we've got to really um, ponder what really matters about what I'm saying. Am I just saying things that 
you know, aren't going to help people at all in their, in their overall life? Am I just saying, am I leading people in a direction that's going to help them eternally? Am I leading people with my words, with my actions, in a, in a path that's going to be something worth following in the end? And I think it's so important for us to know what it is we're trying to do. So in the Super Bowl, I think there was three things these commercial, these companies were asking themselves. Three things that you and I should ask ourselves. And I, like, I don't know, I didn't interview these companies, but this is what I thought. Number one, they probably asked themselves, um, what is our goal? What is our goal here? What do we want to do? So I think it's important for you and I to know our goal in our communication, in our meetings, in our decisions. What is our goal? Ultimately, what is our goal? For Google, their goal is to make money, right? To get more clients. For Netflix, they want more subscribers. For YouTube, they're trying to get subscribers. <laughs> they're trying to get people to pay for something that is pretty much free for all of us out there. Sorry, YouTube. Uh, uh, you know, Disney Plus, they're gaining thousands of subscribers every day because they're putting out more content. Their goal is more people. As a leader, you've got to know what is my goal as a pastor, as a preacher, what is my goal um, for what I'm doing, for preaching, for doing church, for doing outreaches? So that's the first question. Number two, they were asking themselves, who is my audience? Who is my audience? That's a question that I think we should all be asking ourselves is, who am I trying to reach? Um, you've got to know your goal, but you've got to know your audience. You've got to know, man, am I going after teenagers? Am I going after kids? Am I going after married people, single people um, with this product or with this message? Who am I trying to reach with this? Who am I pursuing with my ministry? I was talking with one pastor um, and he said, I used to just, you know, pursue anything and everything and anyone and everyone. But then he said, I made a decision. I was going to specifically target going after uh, really trying to reach young teenage guys with a message of purity. And I said, man, that's awesome. And he said, yeah. He said, what happened was I lost a lot of the other um, age group demographics that I was trying to reach, but I gained a whole lot more of that age group that I wasn't reaching. And I could live with that. He said, that was, that was the thing I had to uh, be comfortable living with that. You know, for us, we have an audience here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We have a, an audience that we're called to reach in each of our campuses. You know, I meet with all of our campus pastors. I say, okay, Victory North, you need to know who your audience is. Victory Manford, you got to know who your audience is. Victory Downtown, you have a different audience than Victory Main Campus. So we got to know who is that audience we're called to reach. And the third thing that I think these commercials ask themselves is this. Um, what are we asking people to do? What are we asking people to do? So you gotta know your goal, know your audience, and know your ask. I said ask. Know your ask. Know what you're asking people to do. Um, as a preacher, at the end of my message, if I'm not asking people to get saved, then what am I really preaching about? Like, <laughs> if I'm not asking people to surrender to Jesus, to become a little bit more uh, broken about their life before Jesus, I've gotta know that that helps me with my entire message. These commercials, they know at the end of their, their commercial, they're asking people to buy this medicine, to invest in this thing, to subscribe to this thing. So they, they're clear. They're going to use any kind of fun or emotional way to connect with you or I and then get to that final question. And I think for you, for, for me, for us as leaders, we've got to be really um, able to answer those three questions. What is my goal? Who is my audience? And what am I asking them to do? What am I going to ask them to do? And am I willing to do what I'm asking them to do? If I'm going to ask other people to go all in for Jesus, am I modeling that? Am I, am I all in for Jesus? Um, so many, you know, people have walked away from uh, Christianity, I think, because they were sold something by someone who promised them what it would turn out and then finding out that that person wasn't even sold out to it either. And so the hypocrisy bothers people. So knowing your ask also requires you to go, is what I'm asking them to do something I would say yes to? Um, it, it, with your product, if you are working for a bank, if you're a teacher, if you're a principal, if you're a coach, if you're asking kids to play for your team or come to your school or uh, switch their money to your bank, would you do it? Would you do it? Like, would you leave your bank to go to, would you leave the bank that you're at to come to your, and why? Like, is your ask worthy? Is it, does it have a payoff? Is there a promise to it? Is there a reward on the other side of it? As a pastor, as a preacher, I know that when I ask people 
to make a decision to commit their life to Christ or to repent and receive his forgiveness, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the ask is worth it. I'm going to give that ask and it's going to have a reward for everyone who says yes to that question, everyone who responds to it. I know on the other side of it, their life is going to get better. I can answer that with a genuine, authentic uh, response that there is, it's not a gimmick. It's not a trick. It's not just trying to get money from someone. I genuinely believe that when they give their heart to Christ and they put their hope and their trust in Him, their life is going to get better. Their marriage is going to get better. Their relationships with other people is going to get better. Their internal disposition and perspective on life is going to get better. So know your ask and know that if you are asking people to do this, there's a payoff, there's a reward for it. That's what we can learn from the Super Bowl commercials of 2020.